In high school, I achieved distinctions in physical sciences and mathematics, and I want to share my tips and strategies with you. How do you achieve a distinction? First, start by understanding the basics. For example, electromagnetism is important from grades 11 and 12. If you get the hang of this topic in grade 11, you'll find it easier in grade 12. So, let's learn the basics of electromagnetism together. I'm going to walk you through solving a typical grade 11 physical sciences question on this topic. This will help you prepare for homework, tests, or exams, and you'll be a step closer to achieving a distinction. Question 10.1. Copy the following diagrams in your answer book and show the form and direction of the magnetic field due to the current in each case. 10.1.1. Given a dot or a black dot, and it says top view of a current carrying wire. That question is worth two marks. 10.1.2, you're given a, a setup for a solenoid and you, it's written there, a solenoid. Let's solve this problem together. In this question, you are given two types of current carrying wires or conductors. In 10.1, in 10.1, you are given the top view of a current carrying wire or conductor. But as they've mentioned, you only see that top view, which is a black dot. A straight current carrying conductor would look something like this, where you have a normal wire and it is connected to a power source like a bit you can connect it like this when you connect this uh, straight current carrying wire to a battery there is a flow of charge meaning there will be current the current in this current carrying wire induces a magnetic field around it around this is why and this is why the question says we must find the direction of that magnetic field around this wire thereof and to do that we are going to use the right hand rule so just have your right hand ready to solve 10.1.1 you need at least three things one is your right hand the second is a pen and the third is just a piece of paper as I have. So this pen represents the current carrying wire like this. So this is just a representation of this. So when you're writing an exam, you probably have a pen. I hope you have a pen. And on this pen, stick uh, the one end of it or at least at the bottom part that is a, a bit flat you need to stick like a, a paper with a cross on it and then the tip if you uh, flip this pen around the tip of this pen will represent a dot that dot that black dot that we saw in question 10.1.1 According to the right-hand rule, current can travel in two directions. And so the thumb of your right hand represents this two direction. Current can travel into the page where your, your, your thumb is pointing into the page. Remember, I said this is a, my page or out of the page. You see in which direction is my thumb pointing. Let's do this two more times into the page out of the page into the page out of the page these two directions that i've just demonstrated are represented with a dot and a cross so out of the page is represented with a dot so out of the page is represented with a dot 
into the page is represented with a cross. So out of a page, you have a black dot. Into the page, you have a cross. And this is where your pen comes in. So this pen, you see, that's why I said at the bottom of it, uh, have a, a stick to it, a paper where you have drawn a cross and the, the tip of it will just represent the, this dot. All right. So hold your pen like this in your right hand, right? So hold it like this. If the current is traveling out of the page like this, your thumb is pointing upwards or is pointing out of the page. You see? Meaning that your current is out of the page. And that was represented with a dot. So you see the tip of your pen just represent that dot that we have drawn. So your current is out of the page. And even in question 10.1.1, they gave us a dot. So it means the current for question 10.1.1 is out of the page. We now know the direction of the current. But what is the direction of the magnetic field? The other four fingers of your right hand represent the direction of the magnetic field for a straight for a straight current con, current carrying conductor there are two directions we refer to we talk about anti clockwise direction like this right or the clockwise direction so anti clockwise your 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 the fingers of your right hand are doing this counterclockwise no clockwise they are doing this so what is the case in 10.1.1 so we said that the our current is going out of the page meaning we are holding the pen like this the other fingers you see they are killing in that anti-clockwise because they are killing like this around our current carrying wire so it means that the direction of our magnetic field in question 10.1.1 is like this the current is out of the page you see that dot but the magnetic field lines are killed like this in the clockwise anti-clockwise direction in our answer book we will draw the image in 10.1.1 and indicate the magnetic field. So we'll draw that image in 10.1 as it is. And then, so how it was drawn, they had a dot. We said this dot means that the, cu the current is out of the page. So it's represented with a a dot and we will indicate the magnetic field lines by drawing a couple of lines around the current carrying wire so i'm just i'm going to draw three of them around so it means this current carrying wire has a magnetic field around it right how do we indicate that clockwise that anti-clockwise direction so let me do this. The dot means the current is out of the page. Out of page. As we demonstrated why using the right hand rule. And the lines there or the circles around this current carrying wire is representative of the magnetic field lines. And those magnetic field lines, you said they are going in the anti-clockwise direction or the counterclockwise direction. So we'll draw them like this. An arrow in the counterclockwise direction. You can draw on both sides of your dot. So they are killing in that counterclockwise direction. And if you've done that, you'll get your, your two marks.
a solenoid is like an electromagnet you have an an iron core in our case you just have a nail and around it i've just wrapped a a wire a conducting wire this wire to make an electromagnet will need to be connected to a power source and when you do that you will induce a magnetic field in this wire and we need to find as we did in the case of a straight current carrying wire we need to find the direction of that magnetic field that is produced how do we do that we need to first understand how do we draw magnetic field lines around a permanent magnet. A permanent magnet has a north and a south pole. So you see the north pole and the south pole. And we're going to spread something called iron fillings and spread them all around. Here are my iron fillings. I'm going to spread them all over this magnet so i'm going to have my permanent magnet i'm going to put a piece of paper on top of it and then i'm going to spread my iron fillings on top of it i'm going to do this very slowly and then i will observe what happens and after a while we're going to observe a pattern So, as I mentioned, after a while, you're going to start seeing a, a pattern. What pattern is that? When we draw, so when we draw magnetic field lines around a permanent magnet, so you draw an image of your permanent magnet, and then you say this is the north and this is the south pole, right? And then we will draw magnetic field lines like this around that permanent magnet you see because you see those magnetic field lines are going around that permanent magnet so we can draw a couple of them a couple of these lines they are closer together there at the poles and they spread away from the poles they are more spread it's not a perfect picture and this magnetic field lines for this permanent magnet they are always pointing towards the south pole we draw arrows like this so for a permanent magnet this is why we draw them this way look at that pattern and this is what we we drew an electromagnet which is created when we have this uh, pin and we wrap a conducting wire around it and connect it to a battery also has those magnetic field lines that we observed with a permanent magnet around it. This means this electromagnet will also have its north and south pole. So we need to draw that direction. How then do we know which direction will be the north and which direction will be the south? So we will draw the solenoid in our answer book. So let's do, do that. 
So you will draw it like this. So we draw the iron core. It looks like a rectangle. And then we will draw the bechi. And then you have a wire from the positive terminal of your battery, like this. It goes behind the iron core and then appears here. And it will disappear at the back and it will appear again like this. So that's how you draw it. And then finally, it goes all the way to the negative terminal, right? And then we need to also draw magnetic field lines around it. So an electromagnet is a magnet, is a, is a magnet. So it also has, you can just draw two. It also has a magnetic field around it, which we represent by these lines. The drawing doesn't have to be perfect. Right? But now, which? how do I know which side of the electromagnet this side or this side is the north or the south pole? And this is where the right hand rule comes in handy. For an electromagnet or solenoid, we change the right hand rule slightly. So still using the right hand rule but now different from the case of the straight current carrying wire now the thumb will tell me the direction of the north pole of my electromagnet so the thumb will tell me the north pole and the base of my fist will tell me the south pole so the south pole the north pole the north pole the south pole depending on how I do my right hand rule. So take your right hand and let's do this together. The north pole, the south pole. If it's like this, the south pole is this side and the north pole is this side. The other four fingers. Now the other four fingers are no longer the direction of the magnetic field. It is the direction of current flow. So now I'm asking you a question. Is conventional current from the positive to the negative terminal or the negative to the positive terminal of your battery? If you connect anything to a power source such as a battery, you must know that conventional current direction is always from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. We have a battery. And the long vertical strand, this one, the long one represents the positive terminal of the battery and the short one there means the negative of terminal of the battery, right? And we said conventional current is always from positive to negative. That is conventional current. So it means that my current is going to travel like this from the positive terminal, right? All the way towards the iron core, the rectangle. So it's going there, up. And then you see it goes behind the iron core and finally appears here at the front of the iron core. It disappears all the way at the back, appears like this. There it is. And then it disappears again, appears, disappears again, appears here at the top. All the way towards the negative terminal of the, the battery. If we take now the pen to represent the iron core, that uh, rectangle in your diagram, then we use the right hand, we hold it like that. We said this is the north pole. This is the thumb, is the, is the north pole, south pole, north pole, right? 
it means now if we have current flowing through that solenoid so we're using the right hand rule set from the positive this is the negative terminal this is the positive so how does that current travel so that current is going to travel from the, this uh, a positive terminal of the battery all the way behind the the iron core and then it appears at the front then it disappears all the way behind appears at the front disappears appears at the front disappears and then appears so it's 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 curling around the iron core like this where is my farm pointing my farm is here meaning the north pole the north pole of that solenoid will be here and the south pole of that solenoid will be here using the right hand rule we will then write the north pole here and the south pole here. And we said that magnetic field lines are always from the north to the south. This means we will draw arrows pointing to the south from the north, like this, even here at the top. Question 10.2. A solenoid with 450 turns has a cross-sectional area of 176 square centimeter. It is positioned perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field of 0 0.72 teslas. 10.2.1. Calculate the flux through the solenoid. So typically, when you are asked to calculate, first start by writing down what is given in the problem. This will help you in terms of uh, figuring out which uh, formula or expression to use to calculate. So we are given that N capital letter N is the number of tens that is equals to 450, right? And we are given the area, which is the cross-sectional area, and they said that area is 176 squared centimeter. Squared because we have two there to the power of two. But this value is not in its SI units. So we need to first convert to SI units. So you'll have 176. Every time you see centi, just know that it means multiply by 10 raised to the power of minus 2 and we'll write meters here. So centi, centi just essentially means multiply by 10 raised to the power of minus 2 and we divide the whole thing because we are converting from centimeters to meters. So we divide by 100. Remember, 100 centimeters equals to 1 meter. So that's why when we convert them from centimeter to meter, we first divide by 100. So if you do that and you put this whole thing in your calculator, you will come to a value of 0, 0.017 six we've converted now to meters so it will be meters squared so our area is 0 0.0176 meters squared so we're still writing down what we are provided we are also provided with the magnetic field it's a uniform magnetic field it's 0 0.72 teslas we're also given the magnetic flux no we are not given the magnetic flux but we have to calculate it and we use Weber's. Theta, the angle theta, do we know what the angle theta is? No, but we can determine it and I'll show you how. So the second step is we've written down what we are given. The second step is to then try to draw the situation that they are telling us. Why? It will help us in terms of finding the value of theta. So to draw it, they said the magnetic field is uniform. So we can just draw the North Pole. Say this is the North Pole. 
it's uniform throughout so it's almost uh, as if in a situation where you have a north and a south pole and we said that electric field lines are always pointing from the north to the south pole so i'll just draw a line like that from the north to the south showing the direction and now to represent our solenoid i'm just gonna draw it as a a line i'm not gonna draw the the solenoid exactly i'm just gonna draw the line so i'll draw a line or just a block so this is our solenoid they say that it is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines so the magnetic field lines are in this direction and there is our solenoid perpendicular right now the theta is typically said right theta is the angle between magnetic field line magnetic field line that angle and the normal to the solenoid or the normal to whatever object is placed in a magnetic field in this case it is a solenoid normal to the solenoid so that theta is the angle between the magnetic field lines here are my magnetic field lines but what what is the normal to the solenoid that normal to the solenoid is the line that is perpendicular to the solenoid draw i'm gonna get a red pen so that line that is normal if if my solenoid i'm going to demonstrate this shortly if my solenoid is like this a normal to it would be a line that is just perpendicular it makes a 90 degree angle so the normal to the solenoid would be the red line when we say something is normal we mean that it is perpendicular to that thing so let's say this pen represents my solenoid and we said it has it is within a uniform magnetic field so you have the north and the south pole so there's your solenoid perhaps somewhere in the middle of that magnetic field when we say something is normal it means it's perpendicular it's coming in this direction so it is perpendicular it makes a 90 degree angle with whatever with my solenoid so this would be the normal to my solenoid so it is that red line that i drew that is normal to the solenoid you see so that is the line that is normal normal to the solenoid which is represented by the pen over there so hope that is clear this is why that red line is drawn like that it's normal to our solenoid which is within a uniform magnetic field with a north and a south pole it's normal it's perpendicular to the solenoid so theta is the angle between the normal to the solenoid and the magnetic field lines which are from the north to the south pole what is the angle between these two the red and the dark line the dark line representing the magnetic field lines from north to the south pole and the red being the normal to the solenoid you can see they are parallel if they are parallel it means it's like this the angle between them is zero it means that we can establish that theta is equals to zero degrees because the two lines are actually parallel to each other so we have found that theta now we've determined it and we said theta is zero degrees and we demonstrated why so we have everything we have the area we have the magnetic field we also have theta we can actually calculate what the magnetic flux is using this formula the formula is the magnetic flux 
is equal to B, which is our magnetic field strength, A, which is the area that was given to us, and the cause of the angle theta. We know what theta is. We know what the the area is. We also know what the magnetic field strength B is. It's just a matter of substituting, like putting everything in in brackets. So it's the cos of the angle zero. The area is zero point zero one seven six, and the magnetic field strength is 0 0.72. The cause of 0, something you should know, is 1. Try to memorize it. So the cause of 0 of the angle, 0 decrease is just 1. Meaning if you put the whole thing in your calculator as it is, you're going to get a value of 0 Five. You can just round it off maybe to three decimal places, 0 0.013. You write the units for magnetic flux, which is Weber. So this is how you will get your three marks. I think that question was worth three marks. So let's go to the next question. Question 10.2.2. Calculate the induced EMF if the solenoid is pulled out of the magnetic field in about 0 .0, 0 0.22 seconds. And this is with three marks. So we are asked to determine the EMF. How do we go about doing this? The first step, like I said, when you solving questions is to always write down what is given. We've now actually calculated the magnetic flux, that is the magnetic flux at the beginning. So that magnetic flux, we calculated it to be, how much was it? It was 0. Point, let me erase the entire thing. So it was about 0. 0.013, 0. 0.013 Weber's. But this is the magnetic flux in the beginning before they pulled out the, the, the solenoid out of the magnetic field. We will also have a magnetic flux after. So after, now after that time which they said it is 0. Point, so the change in time, that time is delta T is 0. 0.22. Right? So then, what is the magnetic flux? If you pull the solenoid out of the magnetic field, there won't be a magnetic flux. So the magnetic flux at the end will just be zero Weber's. So we have the number of turns. We have the change in time. We have the initial magnetic flux. We have the final magnetic flux we are actually in a very good position to calculate the induced EMF. And we use this formula for the EMF. Click letter epsilon, that uh, uh, weird looking E, is equals to the number of tens, the negative of the number of tens, multiplied by the change in the magnetic flux. So hopefully we are seeing why I had to do initial and final magnetic flux is because of that change in magnetic flux. And all of this is just divided by delta T. So this change in magnetic flux, I can actually write it as a change in magnetic flux is going to be the final magnetic flux minus what the magnetic flux was in the beginning before we pulled out that solenoid. So it means I can just substitute this expression here. So I'll just rewrite the entire thing and say epsilon or the EMF equals to the negative. Open brackets and write magnetic flux in the final one minus the initial magnetic flux, all of it divided by the change in time or delta T. What was N? N was 450. 
what was the what did I say the final magnetic flux is? It, I said it is zero because we've taken the solenoid out of the magnetic field minus the initial, which we calculated to be 0 0.013. Whereas all of it, how long was that pulling out process? It was 0 0.22. And if you put everything exactly the way it is, negative brackets 150, another bracket 0 minus 0 0.0013, all divided by 0 0.022, 0 .22, you're going to get a value of 26. Point so it means that our EMF equals to 26.59. EMF is measured in volts. And actually this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment. I would really appreciate the feedback.